Hey guys, welcome to the 12th episode of Short Bits by Shorty. Last one in the psychiatry series, holla! Okay, so a few announcements, um, just four. Number one, for future reference, because I had a few questions, if you want to see something in the video but it's too blurry in the video, feel free to download the handout found at the bottom of the video description at the bottom of the video. Um, there's a link to the handout in the video descriptions and the link to the poll EV. Number two, speaking of the video, feel free to subscribe for updates. Press the subscribe button for notifications on when I post new videos. Number three, if you want a shout out to yourself or to one of your pets like I did with Two's dog Franklin, here's his handle by the way in case you missed it the last video. It's hello. Franklin, checking him on Instagram, Twitter, um, he, here's his handle. So if you want to shout out to yourself or to one of your pets, or to yourself like I did with Sunny during a video last semester, let me know and I'll include you in the next video. Um, last announcement, number five, I'm doing another five question review at the end of the video, at, after the review portion of the video. Um, they're good. They're gonna be Glennon style questions like the last video. I didn't get any constructive feedback of the review part or five question review part in the last video. Only got positive feedback, so I'm assuming it was helpful. So I'm doing it again. If it wasn't helpful, let me know. And I won't do it ever again. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so first we're gonna talk about your central stimulants. Um, so in the handout, he states that phenylalkylamines, specifically phenylethylamine, are the most common structural motif found in drugs. They're found in neurotransmitters, here I abbreviated it, um, NTs, and amino acids, which I abbreviated amino AAs. Um, the alpha-methyl counterpart is termed the phenylisopropylamine, PIA. Um, and the term phenylalkylaminome, uh, phenyl, I expanded it for you so you can see it. Um, the term phenylalkylaminome is a general term used to describe the general huge class of PIA, PAAs, or phenylalkylamines. So, to put what I said in pictures, phenylalkylamines or right our term our term so because here's your phenylalkylamine or PAA here's your phenyl your alkyl group which is your carbon group and your amine group so your phenylalkylamine specifically phenylethylamine over here you have your phenyl ethyl carbon 1 carbon 2 ethyl salt 2 carbons and you have your amine it's a phenylethylamine these are your most common structural motifs found in drugs they're found in numerous they're found in also in neurotransmitters and amino acids. And their alpha methyl counterpart is phenyl isopropylamine. So here's phenyl isopropylamine. So here's your phenyl um, isopropyl, um, propyl meaning three carbons, one, two, three, three carbons, um, and amine. Um, your phenyl isopropylamine is your alpha methyl alpha methyl counterpart, meaning that your PAA is here, um, you're a adding a methyl to the alpha carbon, which is the a carbon right after the amine group, so adding a methyl after the car on, on the alpha carbon makes it a phenyl isopropylamine. So basically, um, your PIAs, your phenyl isopropylamines, are your alpha methyl analogs, or yeah, analogs of P phenylalkylamines or PAAs. Um, so your prototype for this class is amphetamine. It's a CNS stimulant um, used to treat narcolepsy. Um, it's an indirect acting sympathomimetic. Um, which has actions as a vasoconstrictor and a decongestant, and it's an anorectic, meaning it's an appetite suppressant. It has four major metabolism routes, three of which are major in humans, one of which is found in rodents. So here are the metabolism routes. Um, it undergoes aromatic or four-position hydroxylation in rodents, uh, not in humans. 
So you can't find the 4 position hydroxyl in human. Um, so here is your 4 position hydroxyl, and that is found in rodents. Oh, these are... I'm drawing amphetamines. I'm drawing amphetamine, but the, the ones in yellow are amphetamines, but I'm drawing the metabolites of amphetamine. Um, so this is amphetamine again. Mm. This time it's undergoing beta-hydroxylation. Beta-hydroxylation is another metabolite of the phenylalkylamines. Um, it's called beta-hydroxylation because you're hydroxylating at the beta position. So remember, this is your alpha position right after the amine. This is your beta position two carbons after the amine. So here's your hydroxyl at the beta position. That's beta-hydroxylation. Um, oxidative deamination by monoamine oxidase. Remember from the last video that monoamine oxidase produces acids and alcohols. So here's amphetamine again, except now it's an alcohol, and now it's an acid. Um, so now, this one's a little more detailed. This is N-hydroxylation, which is the major metabolite in humans. So N-hydroxylation means you're adding a hydroxyl group to the amine. So we'll go, there's actually three sub subparts of this. We'll go through each one. So we'll start with amphetamine over here. First, it's going to go hydroxylation to at the nitrogen. So first step is N-hydroxylation, meaning you're adding hydroxylation to the nitrogen. So here's your nitrogen, adding hydroxyl makes it an amine hydroxyl, and that's term and hydroxyl amine. So you can conjugate this, and you can just create it. Or, number sub, sub reaction number two, you can start with amphetamine, add a hydroxyl group again to make the hydroxyl amine, hydroxyl amine. Then you can add, you can oxide it, oxidize it by adding, hydro, adding oxygens. That makes it an oxime, which is double bonded, double bonded compared to a single bonded nitrogen, still bonded to a hydroxyl group. Add an acid, and then you can make it a ketone. So this N, this oxine group, converts to a ketone. This is termed P2P. P2P can be converted to benzoic acid. Um, so in summary of this reaction, amphetamine goes to hydroxylamine, hydroxylamine, which goes to an oxime, which is a double bonded nitrogen attached to hydroxyl, which is converted to a ketone, which is converted to benzoic acid. This ketone is also termed P2P. So now you have the two major metabolites of N-hydroxylation, hydroxylamine and you have benzoic acid. I box them in red so you know which ones are the major metabolites. Um, let's see. Ooh, did I forgot to label that? Amphetamine, subreaction number three, amphetamine can be converted to an imine, which is a double bonded nitrogen without anything attached to it. So it's compared to an oxime, which is a double bonded nitrogen attached to a uh, double bonded nitrogen compared to a hydroxyl, an imine is just a double bonded nitrogen. So amphetamine can just be converted to an imine. And this amine is converted to a ketone, which is P2P. This ketone can be, P2P can be, can be converted to benzoic acid. Now the cool thing is that P2P is regulated because you can actually go from P2P back to amphetamine. Oh by adding nitrogens. So you can add... So P2P is regulated because you can convert P2P back to amphetamine by a process called reductive, reductive amination where you just add nitrogens. So adding, rea adding nitrogens from the ketone P2P to amphetamine gets you... Wait, adding nitrogens to ke ke the ketone P2P gives you amphetamine. Because adding nitrogens right here, if you compare the structures, here's amphetamine, here's ketone. The only thing that's different is the oxygen and the nitrogen. So converting this oxygen to the nitrogen gives you amphetamine back. Okay, so now let's go over the SAR of stimulants. 
Um, if you, just a disclaimer, um, you might have to assign RNS isomers on the exam. So if you need to review RNS isomers, um, I found a little cool Khan Academy, Khan Academy video. Just type in tinyurl.com slash glennon3. That's tinyurl.com slash glennon3. Um, okay, so to begin, there's about six, five parts to the SAR. We're going to go through each one. Um, number one, the alpha carbon, which is the carbon right next to the nitrogen. So at the alpha carbon, your S isomer is more potent than your R isomer, namely three to, ti three to five times more potent. That's a number to remember. Um, I'll show you why later. Um, maybe towards the end of the video. Um, let's see. So this isomer is your S isomer because it's one, two, three. This way it's S. Um, this is your R isomer because you have one, two, three. Three. Hold on, I wrote that wrong. This should be CH3. This should be hydrogen. My bad. Um, so, scratch this. So, yeah. So, nitrogen is one. Phenyl group is 2, methyl is 3, going this way it's S, but this hydrogen's not in the back, not in the dash, so you reverse it, so it's R. So, S is uh, more potent than R, namely, S is 3 to, times five, three to 5 times more potent. Um... I can explain the S and R real quick if you don't remember. Um, let's see. So, so let's see. Nitrogen is one. First priority. Second priority is this group over here. So it's two. Third priority is methyl because it's uh, less heavy than the phenyl alkyl group. So going counterclockwise is S. The way I remember it is S, if you write an S, normal people write an S, you go counterclockwise. So practice writing your S right now, you'll see. So if you write an S, you're going counterclockwise. That's S configuration. Um, for R configuration, it's... Okay, this is R. Remember, you have to put your lowest priority in the back or in the dash. So, lowest priority as dash. Not the dash diet, but the dash. So this is your wedge, this is your dash. So right here's your wedge, right here's your dash. Um, so, we're going to assign priorities right now. Please review that video. I um, mentioned, in case you don't remember all this, this is just uh, it's me slowing it down so you see it. Um, so here's priority 1, priority 2, priority 3. So it gives you S again. But if your, pri if your lowest priority is not the dash, then you have to reverse it. So your lowest priority is hydrogen, number 4. But it's the wedge, not the dash, so you're going to reverse it. So instead of going S, you're going to go the opposite way, which is R. The way I rem or clockwise. The way I remember it is if you're a normal person, you write your R like this. So practice writing R right now. There's your R, clockwise. So this is R. Um, please read the video, preview the video if you don't remember. Um, so your S isomer is three to five times more potent than your R isomer. Adderall is a mixture of racemic or plus or minus amphetamine sulfate. Um, plus or minus or racemic amphetamine aspartate, plus a amphetamine saccharide, and plus amphetamine sulfate. So there's two racemic parts, the amphetamine sulfate and the amphetamine aspartate, and there's two plus parts, or S isomers. There's amphetamine saccharide and amphetamine sulfate. These are all in equal parts. Um, let's see. 
regarding your alpha substituents. So your methyl, your alpha methyl group is more potent than just the hydrogen. So your alpha methyl is more potent than nothing there or just the hydrogen there. Because, remember, lipophilic compounds penetrate the uh, blood brain barrier. Blood blame, blood brain barrier. So lipophilic compounds penetrate the blood brain barrier more easily than hydrophilic or less lipophilic compounds. So adding a methyl, remember methyls, methyls are lipophilic. So adding a methyl, it makes the compound more lipophilic and more easy to penetrate the blood brain barrier. Also, this compound I'm pointing at is, le is more susceptible to MAO oxidation. Why? Remember that adding a methyl group at the alpha carbon, remember alpha carbons, adding a methyl groups to alpha carbons make compounds less susceptible to MAO oxidation. So since this does not have a methyl group, it is more susceptible to MAO oxidation. Whereas adding a methyl group to the alpha carbon makes it less susceptible to MAO oxidation. Um, homologation, meaning if you make the alpha carbon longer, so if you change it from a methyl group to an ethyl group to a propyl group, which I've shown here, this is a methyl group, this is an ethyl group, this is a propyl group, uh, makes the compound um, less stimulant, less of a stimulant. So methyls are optimal, ethyls are less optimal as stimulants, and propyl alpha carbons are the least ap um, optimal as stimulants. Um, gem dimethyl, meaning you're adding two methyl groups to the alpha carbon, make it less of a stimulant. However, it makes it less um, susceptible to MAO oxidation. Because remember, adding more carbons to MAO oxidation makes it less susceptible. Le adding more carbons to the alpha carbon makes the compound less susceptible to MAO oxidation. So if one carbon was less susceptible to uh, MAO oxidation, then two carbons at the alpha carbon is definitely less susceptible to MAO oxidation. Um, number three, the, third, the terminal amine. So N monomethyl is greater than the primary amine, which is greater than, is uh, more stimulating than a other secondary amine, which is more stimulating than a tertiary amine. So here's your N monomethyl. It has to be a monomethyl. Monomethyls, which is a, actually a secondary amine, because if you look at it, here's one, two, two groups attached to an amine, it's secondary amine. So monomethyls are greater than mo primary amines, which are greater than other secondary amines. So other secondary amines, meaning it's not a monomethyl. So this is a, an ethyl. So ethyls and above are less susceptible, I mean less stimulating than monomethyls. Um, yeah, so ethyls and above are, are included in the other secondary amines. Um, and tertiary amines are the least stimulating for these term, uh, terminal amines. Uh, an example of a, a, tertiary, of a terminal amine example is lisdexamphetamine, which is a prodrug. It's longer acting than amphetamine. It has a greater onset time and has less abuse liability. It works. If you remember, if you remember your L caps from Psych Exam One, where you hydrolyze, they are actually pro drugs that are hydrolyzed, and they're, since they're hydrolyzed to produce the active compound, they are um, longer acting. In the same way, list dexamphetamine is longer acting in that it has to go through hydrolysis to produce amphetamine, the active compound. So here's list dexamphetamine, here's amphetamine. So you're going to hydrolyze it at this bond to give you amphetamine. So here is amphetamine right here. It's the same one. All you're doing is hydrolyzing this part. You get a longer acting compound with a greater onset time. Number four, the beta position. Um, adding hydroxyl at the beta position reduces potency. Because, remember, hydroxyl groups are not lipophilic, they're hydrophilic. Um, so, let's see. 
Hydroxyl groups not lipophilic. Therefore, they do not penetrate the blood brain barrier. Therefore, they can't produce stimulating effects. Um, so, to illustrate, you have your amphetamine here, which is more potent than your beta position amphetamine. So, here's your alpha position, beta position, hydroxyl. This is less potent than amphetamine. An example of this is ephedrine, um, which is the RS or the SR isomer since it has two stereocenters. Um, pseudoephedrine is the RR or the SS isomer. Ephedrine is regulated. It's a major constituent of ephedra. Um, it's used in OTC products. However, herbs are not FDA regulated, so no efficacy data for herbs are needed. I think that's what he wanted you to know from that slide, since it seemed important, and he put stuff in yellow. Um, let's see, bit of position. Five, number five. Alpha, alpha, ugh. Aromatic substituents, um, unsubstituted rings are optimal. Um, however, therefore, adding an electron withdrawing group abolishes stimulant activity. So if you see here, amphetamine is more potent more potent than the associated electron withdrawing analog. So here I just add an electron withdrawing group. Remember, knockoff Burkle are your electron withdrawing groups. Um, adding knockoff Burkle to anywhere on the ring produces a, no, a compound with no stimulant activity. Um, likewise, adding a hydroxyl group um, produces no stimulant activity because remember lipophilic compounds penetrate the blood barrier barrier so adding a hydroxyl group which is not lipophilic uh, pre prevents the molecule from penetrating the blood brain barrier and therefore producing an anti or a stimulant effect however it does produce actions in the PNS because the PNS does not necessarily need peripheral nervous system does not necessarily need um, lipophilic compounds. However, adding an ether, which is less polar than hydroxyl but still polar, allows the molecule to still penetrate the blood brain barrier. However, they're not as potent as amphetamines. Um, so these are ethers are... well I wrote over here. So ethers, which is uh, over here, an O-methyl group, an O-methyl group, um, O-methyl group are less potent stimulants than amphetamine. Um, so orthomethyl, which is OMA, methyl, uh, metamethyl, which is MMA, not mixed martial arts, but MMA, Mrs. Methyl. So this is meth the ether at the ortho position. So it's O for ortho. This is the ether at the meta position. So it's M or metamethyl. And this is the ether at the para position, which is P or para. Remember in the last video I explained what ortho, meth, meta, and para are. Turns out that paramethyl is the most potent among these three, is the most potent among orthomethyl, metamethyl, and paramethyl. And it's actually a schedule one compound. Uh, mechanism of action of these compounds, they enhance the release of dopamine and also serotonin and norepinephrine. So here's a summary of the SARs. Remember that S is more potent than R at the alpha carbon. Um, alpha methyls, alpha carbon substituents are optimal. Gem dimethyl, so adding a dimethyl group at the alpha position, decreases activity but increases its stability against MAO. Unsubstituted rings are optimal. Knockoff Burkle, um, adding a hydroxyl at the beta carbon reduces the lipophys lipophilicity um, uh, and monomethyl is optimal followed by primary means other secondary means and tertiary means okay so now we're going to talk about the tropane analogs which includes cocaine so here's the structure of cocaine um, there are two major two routes of metabol major routes of metabolism which are ester hydrolysis and N demethylation. The major, major um, root of metabolism is ester hydrolysis, um, which I underlined here. 
Um, so it can be hydrolyzed. Okay, where can it be hydrolyzed if it's going undergoing ester hydrolysis? Find me the esters. You have one here, and you have another one right here. So you can hydrolyze it. This is not a prototype, by the way. Um, he's just uh, he just talked about it a lot, so he might it might be an exam. I don't know. I don't know what this dude anymore. I give up. Um, let's see. This one, which is benzoyl echonine. And you can also have when you hydrolyze both parts, you get echonine. So hydrolysis of both esters gives you um, so hydrolysis of this one gives you here to give you the acid but still retain the benzyl group, benzyl ester, and you have benzoyl echonine. However, hydrolyzing this one and then this one both gives you two as this one and then this one. So that gives you echonine. Um, so benzoyl echonine is named so because it still has a benzoyl group and it's echonine in that it has this part. So benzoyl echonine is just it's basically just echonine, except you have the benzoyl group still here. It's not the fully metabolized cocaine. It's just pretty much halfway metabolized. So benzoyl echonine is just halfway metabolized cocaine. Um, so which one do you expect to occur first? Um, hydrolysis at this group or the benzoyl group? The methyl group is here. Preferentially, this is metabolized first because just like MAO has um, steric hindrance or like if there's bulky groups, it won't really metabolize it. This is a bulky group, so you can't, the esterase can't really hydrolyze, pre can't really prefer to hydrolyze the bulky group first. So it goes for the least bulky group, which is this not bulky group. So preferentially, this is metabolized first to produce benzoylecamine. Um, so yeah, cocaine okay, goes to retinal metabolism, ester hydrolysis, and demethylation. Ester hydrolysis is the major one. It works by blocking the reuptake of dopamine. So how does it do that? By stabilizing the open out conformation. So this is your basic picture of your neuron, your presynaptic neuron, and your postsynaptic neuron. Where this is your presynaptic neuron, this is your postsynaptic neuron. Um... And this is your dopamine transporter. I should label that. So that's your dopamine transporter. Um, so let's see. So dope in the normal transport in the normal reuptake pathway. Dopamine. This, this is the transporter. It's in the open out conformation, meaning that's open to the outside of the synapse. So dopamine enters the transporter. Transporter closes to hold dopamine, which is the occluded or the closed to out state. So it's closed to the outside of the neuron. Now it's going to open to the inside to reuptake dopamine into the synapse. That's termed the open in conformation. So cocaine works to block dopamine from being reuptake, took in reuptaked, reuptaken, um, I don't know English, by binding to the dopamine transporter at the um, open out state. So as I said here, it stabilizes or binds to the open out conformation. So this is the open out conformation. So this open out conformation looks just like this. So cocaine binds to the open out conformation and blocks dopamine from being reuptaken into the neuron. 
Uh, it's important to know that cocaine itself is not transported into the neuron. It just stabilizes the transporter and blocks it in this conformation. And it yeah, prevents the transition to the occluded state. So it prevents the transporter from going to the open out state to the occluded state, or the closed out state. So cocaine binds here and prevents the transporter from closing in order to prevent it, to prevent number one from the transporting being transitioned to the occluded state or the closed out state, and number two from dopamine being reuptaken into the transporter. Um, let's see. Miscellaneous agents are number one modafinil, which is an atypical dopamine transporter. It stabilizes the occlude, occluded or the closed out state. So basically, if cocaine stabilizes or binds to the closed out, open to out state, modafinil binds over here and the occluded to out, clo closed to out state. So it binds as the dopamine transporter is completely closed. Important to note that just like cocaine, um, modafinil itself is not transported. It also works at hypocretin receptors, number one and number two, which are respectively termed orexin A and orexin B. And these receptors are involved in wakefulness and feeding. So by activating the orexin receptors, it is actually acts as a stimulant. Um, it's also termed a eugaroic compound, meaning it's not a typical stimulant or a typical amphetamine-like stimulant. Um, it's important to know that R minus isomer binds at the dopamine receptors and not the S plus isomer. Um, as such, there are two optical isomers which are found at the sulfoxide group. Suvorexin, on the other hand, is an orexin A and orexin B antagonist, meaning it, provo it prevents wakefulness or sleeping or in feeding and it's used in the treatment of insomnia. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the hallucinogens. So the definition of the overall definition of hallucinogens uh, are agents that, upon administration of a single dose, single dose is important, consistently produce changes in thought, mood, and perception, thought, mood, and perception without autonomic disturbance or addiction liability. In addition, they bind with high affinity at 5-HT2A receptors and act as 5-HT2A 5 agonists. So key things are here are they administered at a single dose, produce uh, changes in thought, mood, and perception, and they act at agonists at the 5-HT2A receptors. You can measure their potency by mescaline units, or MUs, um, so approximately 350 milligrams of a substance is e producing one of a single effect is one mescaline unit, whereas two mescaline units or twice as potent is produced by 175 milligrams of that same compound. This makes sense because twice potency per is necessitated by less of a drug. So 350 milligrams divided by two gives you 175 milligrams, which is twice as potent for one effect, or two times as much green units as um, a single a drug with one mescaline unit. So the first class we're going to talk about are your indole alkylamine hallucinogens, or IAAs. The first subclass of that, your tryptamines. This is termed an indole alkyl hallucinogen because here's your indole ring, which is your five-member nitrogen ring with a double bond there. And here's your alkyl amine. So uh, tryptamine is actually not hallucinogenic. Why? Because of the not lipophilic or the hydrophilic group here. So um, this group is not lipophilic, therefore it can't cross the blood-brain barrier. And if it does, it is uh, rapidly metabolized by mean monoamine oxidase. Why? Because it's a primary mean. Remember, primary means are preferred for monoamine oxidase. So it's not hallucinogenic because, number one, it has the hydrophilic or the not lipophilic amine group. Number two, it's hydrolyzed quickly by monoamine oxidase because it's a primary mean. So your prototype for the tryptamines is NN dimethyltryptamine. Um, it's termed so because it's, here's a tryptamine, but here's your um, di dimethyl group, 1-methyl, 2-methyl. 
Um, it has a potency of 5 mescaline units. Here's the SIR. Oh, also, you got your beta carbon, your alpha carbon, previous, like, before, and I numbered every atom in the ring for you, pretty much. Um, okay, so here's your SAR. So, terminal amines, number one, terminal amines. Your diethyl uh, tryptamine is approximately potent to dimethyl tryptamine, which is more potent than uh, dipropyl tryptamine. So here you have in picture form, here's your ethyl ethyl, which is approximately potent, equally potent to your methyl, dimethyl, which are more potent than your pro... 1, 2, 3, propyl. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, propyl group. So, however, your methyls are optimal. It's right over here, optimal. Methyls are optimal, however, ethyl, diethyl groups are equal potent. Um, aromatic substituents. 4-hydroxy increases the lipophilicity, um, so it increases the mescaline unit. So here you have your 4-hydroxy. Um, so the reason that 4-hydroxys are more potent because the nitrogen can form a bond with, form an intramolecular bond with the uh, hydroxyl over here. This closes up the ring and therefore increases the lipophilicity. Because closed rings compared to just open amines are more lipophilic. Open amines are very hydrophilic, and open hydroxyls are very hydrophilic. But closing up the ring by forming a bond between them decreases the hydrophilicity and increases lipophilicity. If you increase the lipophilicity by adding, the, adding this 4-hydroxyl, you increase the penetration into the blood-brain barrier, therefore you increase the muscling units. Um, over here, the 5-hydroxy is too far for the, nit the amine, the open amine, to, f to form a bond here. Um, therefore, it can't really form the intramuscular bond. However, here, the hydroxyl is close enough for the amine to form that bond. Whereas a 5-hydroxy over here isn't close enough. 4-methyl decreases... Yeah, 4... O methyl decreases the mescaline units. So here's your uh, DMT, and here you're adding a 4 um, ether group. So 4 O methyl group decrease is less potent than your tryptamine. Um, 5 hydroxyl, like I showed you earlier, 5 hydroxyls are inactive. Uh, 5 O methyl, so adding an O methyl at the 5 position increases the mescaline unit. So this is more potent than its corresponding tryptamine. Yep, more potent than its tryptamine. Adding an O-methyl or a hydroxy at the 5 or 6 position are make the compound inactive as hallucinogens. Remember, we're talking about hallucinogen potency, not stimulant potency. potency. They're very different. Uh, next up, we have the side chains. So, alpha methyl tryptamine and their analogs are more potent than their corresponding um, tryptamines. They are also more stable against metabolism, especially MAO. Um, so the alpha alpha substituent is twice as potent than the DMT. Um, the S isomer is twice as potent than the rest of it. I'll explain all this soon. So, here's your um, alpha methyl tryptamine. You have a substituent at the alpha group, and here's your DMT, which is, you know, your prototype. Um, important thing, you can't not, you should not have both an alpha and the dimethyl group, or else you decrease potency. So here you have the alpha group, but notice you don't have the dimethyl group here. You just have an NH2. Here is your dimethyl group you're referring to. So if you have an alpha group, don't add the dimethyl group here or else you decrease potency. So the alpha methyl group is more potent than the cor its corresponding group. Um, here it's corresponding here because you have... Um, it's the same compound, same rings. Phenyl ring and the indole ring. Phenyl ring and the indole ring. You have two carbons, one, two and the nitrogen, two carbons, one, two, and the nitrogen. The only thing that's different is the 
dimethyl group and the alpha group. Remember, if you have an alpha group, you cannot have a dimethyl group or else you decrease potency. So the alpha DMT is more potent than just the alpha methyl tryptamine is more potent than the dimethyl tryptamine. Hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, let me know. Um, now I said so I said that the alpha uh, tryptamine is methyl tryptamine is more potent than the corresponding dimethyl tryptamine by twice as much. I also said that the S isomer of this alpha is twice as potent as the rest of me. So, if I give you this example, um, if 5-O-methyltryptamine DMT has a potency of 15 mescaline units, what is the potency of S plus O-methyl-alpha-methyltryptamine? So here is 5-O-methyl-dimethyltryptamine. You have your 5-O-methyl here, O-methyl at the 5 position, and you have dimethyl. This is, yeah. Um, what if you have the alpha substituent? So here's your alpha carbon. I'll blow it up. Um, so here's your alpha carbon. You have a substituent, methyl substituent here. So what would be the potency in mescaline units? It would be 200. So how did Glenn get that in class? Okay, so remember that. So here's your racemate. Or... Okay, never mind. Okay, so here's your alpha group. So here's your alpha. Remember that I said earlier that alphas are twice as potent than the corresponding DMT. So here's your corresponding DMT over here, and here's your alpha. So you know that it's already twice as potent than this. So 50... So accounting for the alpha group, you have 50 times 2 gives you a potency of 200. Now I told you that the S isomer is avail is right here. And I told you that the S isomer is twice as potent as the racemate. So accounting for the S isomer, you get 100 times 2 and you get 200. So you have to account for each of these two parts. Um, you have to count for one, is it the alpha? Yes, it's the alpha. So you multiply it by two. Now, if he gives you the S isomer, then you also multiply that by two. So ask yourself, one, did I get the alpha carbon substituent? If so, multiply the original number by two, if it's not already an alpha. Next up, if it's the S isomer, then you multiply that number by two, and you get the final answer. If it already, if he didn't give you the S isomer already, so that's how you got two hundred. And it's if he didn't, if he doesn't tell you it's an S isomer, you can figure it out because here you have priority one, priority two, priority three. Going this way, it's R. However, carbon, I did not try that correctly. So carbon is supposed to be a wedge here. I mean a dash. Carbon is supposed to be a dash. Hydrogen is supposed to be a dash. Oh, wedge. So, carbon's a dash, hydrogen's a wedge. You remember, you want your da lowest priority as the dash. However, hydrogen, which is your lowest priority, is a wedge. So, you reverse R, you reverse it going S. So, it's S. Um, where was I? Okay. So yeah, for the alpha methyl tryptamine analogs, alpha methyls are more potent. Um, they are also more metacomotically stable. Alpha is twice as potent as the corresponding DMT. The S plus isomer is twice as potent as the racemate. Um, the alpha ethyl tryptamine analogs are less potent than your tryptamine. Your tryptamine. So here's your alpha ethyl, so ethyl group, al ethyl group at the alpha position, which is less potent than your original tryptamine. So here's a summary of the SIR. Um, let's see. Adding a hydroxyl at the four position increases potency. Adding a meth, an O methyl group at the four position decreases potency. 
adding a hydroxyl group at the 5 position inactivates hallucinogen property, adding an O-methyl group at the 5 position increases hallucinogenic properties. Adding an uh, O-methyl, or su adding a substituent at the 6 or 7 position um, inactivates the compound as a hallucinogen. Um, dimethyls are optimal. Alpha substituents increase potency, except for methyl, which decreases potency. If you have an alpha substituent, remember, you cannot. You have to have a primary nitrogen. You cannot have the dimethyl group here if you have an alpha carbon. So if you have an alpha carbon, do not put the dimethyl group here. Now, two other classes of indole alcohol hallucinogens. The lysergamides, which includes LSD, which are really potent, and they are, compo they are components of blotter acid or blotter LSD. Remember when he talked about the paper, you chewed it, and it had LSD in it, and you got um, hallucinogenide? Yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, beta carbolines are another class. They are not as potent. They need the unsubstituted three position. They're the largest group of, group of hallucinogens. They're naturally occurring, particularly in South America, and they're gaining increasing popularity in the U.S. One, the only thing I mentioned this, the reason I mentioned it is because he has his chest mark, check marks, on, that yellow check mark on that slide, and the hallucinogenic T slide, so I'm including it just in case he has it on the exam. So hallucinogenic T usually comes from Benisteriopsis capi, um, something about Ayahuasca Yage, I think that's the name of the T. Um, <coughs> it's a combination of beta carboline and DMT. Legalized for certain religions in the U.S. and peyote is legal for certain U.S. Indian populations. Okay, so now let's talk about your phenyl alkylamine hallucinogens. So your PIAs or your phenyl isopropylamines are compared to your phenyl phenyl ethylamines or your PEAs are more potent, have less metabolism by MAO and may also be stimulants. So I'll show you here again your PIAs and your... Mm, didn't label that. Show you here again your PIAs and your PEAs. Your PIAs on the left are more potent than your PEAs, are less susceptible to MAO oxidation, and may also be stimulants. So let's talk about your SARs. So first off are your terminal amines. Um, your primary mean is more potent than your secondary mean, which is more potent than your tertiary mean. Um, and monomethylation, which is, like I said, the same thing as second being a secondary mean over here, decreases potency. So your primary means are more potent than your secondary means, which are more potent than your tertiary means. Um, the alpha position substitution... Uh, methyl is optimal, homologation, again meaning methyl to ethyl to propyl and longer, decreases potency. Your R racemate, your R minus um, isomer is more potent than, twice as potent than your racemate. And your R minus isomer is three times or two to five times more potent than your S plus isomer. So as you can see here, your um, alpha position is more potent than no alpha position substitution. And your methyl group is more potent than your ethyl group and your propyl group and longer. Aromatic substituents. Monomethoxy groups are not hallucinogenic. So adding one methoxy group or one ether group, either at the ortho, meta, or the para position, does not make the compound hallucinogenic. Adding uh, the methoxy groups at the 2 and 4 position or the 2 and 5 position make them active. So here it is at the 2 position, 3, 4 position. Or you can have it at the 2, 3, 4, 5 position. So 2 and 4 or 2 and 5 are active. However, 2, 5 is more potent or more active than 2, 4. Um, trimethoxy. All are weak. However, the most potent is your 2, 4, 5. So here's your 2, 3, 4, 5. Um, is the most potent of your trimethoxies. Um, just think of it as a combination of all your active dimethy, dimethoxies. So remember, I said your dimethoxies have 2, 4, and 2, 5 as active. So if you put all these together, here's your 2, 4, 2, Five. So trimethoxy is basically a dimethoxy at all positions. 
The most potent is a 245 trimethoxy. Your metabolism is just like amphetamine, um, so it has it undergoes aromatic or 4 hydroxylation in rodents, beta hydroxylation, oxidative deamination by MAO to turn it into an acid and alcohol, and N hydroxylation. I'm not trying it again because I'm pretty lazy right now. Um, however, the one thing that um, these hallucinogens have in terms of metabolism is number five, benzylic hydroxylation of the, metho of the methyl group. So, here's actually another prototype. Be sure to know this. It's DOM. I put it in the white box over here. It's your prototype for the PIA hallucinogens. So here we're going to go on a, a metabolism of this DOM. So here we're going to turn it into this, meth this methyl group into a hydroxyl group, which is inactive. And then this hydroxyl group um, is oxidized, oxidized to the acid group, which is also inactive. Um, then remember in vivo, cellular cells re remove uh, carboxylic acids, and you get the same compound except no carboxylic acid. Um, so this is um, actually less potent. less potent um okay yeah so summary of benzylic hydroxylation you're basically turning of the methyl group you're basically turning the methyl group and removing it by turning it first into an alcohol then an acid and then removing it basically it looks like mao oxidation you got your acid and your alcohol except you're removing the methyl group so now uh, the table that Glennon has on page 25 of his handout, I'm going to do it in picture form for you, for the visual learners, because I'm a visual learner. Um, so we're going to compare all these structures against DOM, which is your prototype for the PIA hallucinogens. So DOM is shown on the left in green. So we're going to go one by one down the table. So number one, what comparing... So the only thing we're going to change is the four position. So this four position is... This four position is the only thing we're changing. So what if we change it from a methyl group to hydro, uh, hydrogen? Would you expect number one, this number one to be less potent or more potent than Y? It would actually be less potent. It actually has, don't memorize these numbers, I'm just illustrating co the concept. It would have a potency of 10. Why? Because remember, methyl groups are lipophilic more lipophilic actually than hydrogens. So increase in lipophilicity increases the penetration of the brain barrier and therefore increases the hallucinogenic potency. This one doesn't have a methyl group, therefore it's not as lipophilic, therefore it can't penetrate the blood brain barrier and therefore it cannot produce hallucinogenic properties. Number two, which we're gonna change it to an OCH3 now. More potent or less potent than DOM? It's actually less potent than DOM. Um, however, would you expect it to be more potent or less potent than number one, the hydrogen? More potent. So it actually has a DOM, an, has an potency of 20. Yeah, I should have told you that this has a MU of 80. My bad, y'all. Um, we can compare it better. This actually has an MU of 25. So it's less potent because remember I said methoxies or ethers are less lipophilic than methyl groups. However, they are more lipophilic than hydrogens. Why? Because it still has a methyl group here. So remember, methyl groups are more lipophilic than hydrogens. Well, it still has a methyl group, which makes it lipophilic. However, it's offset by the hydrophilic oxygen. So the, hyd the li hydrophilic oxygen offsets the lipophilicity of this methyl and makes it more lipophilic than hydrogen, but still less lipophilic than methyl. So the lipophilicity of this methyl group is offset by this hydrophilic oxygen. So 
Ethers are less lipophilic than methyls. However, ethers are more important than hydrogens, which is why it has a mu greater than 10, but still less than 25. So if I could put the lipophilicity for you, um, I'll do it at the end. Okay. Um, four and five, no, three and four. Um, the only thing changing is the oxygen and the carboxylic acid. So number three, what would you expect number three be? More potent or less potent than DOM? Trick question, it's inactive. Remember, I said here that your alcohol and your acid at the four position are inactive. So this is an active an X. Don't feel like writing the word. Four is also an active because remember you have carboxylic acid here. Remember carboxylic acid and alcohol at the four position is inactive. Okay, number five. Um here's the OM so you can compare. Can you even see that? Okay, just look in your handout for DOM. Uh, okay, number five. Would you expect number five? Okay, whatever. Okay, hopefully you can see this. Okay, so here's DOM. <laughs> I'm so I hate myself. Okay, so DOM is at the top again. Over here, here's number five. Would you expect number five to be more potent, less potent than DOM? More potent. Why? Because it has an ethyl group. Increasing um, the hom 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 homologation at the four position increases potency. So ethyl group is actually more potent than at the four position than your methyl group. So here your MU is actually a hundred. What would it be for number six over here, which has a propyl group? More potent or less potent? More potent, because remember, homologation or adding more methyls increases potency. So actually, your MU is actually 125 here. So adding more methyls increases potency at this four position. At, I should caveat at the four position. And weird thing is, I can't exp I don't know how to explain this, but um, adding a bromine or an iodine, even though they're pretty like hydrophilic, make the compound actually really potent. So I should actually write this as potency. So the potency at the four position, if I could write this out, rank this for you, or is iodine greater than bromine, greater than logs which are like ethyl propyl etc greater than methyl greater than your ethers greater than hydrogen so to explain this Hydrogen, not really lipophilic. However, adding a lipophilic methyl group offset by oxygen makes it, the hydrophilic oxygen makes it more meth more hydro lipophilic, but not really as hydrophilic. I mean, lipophilic compared to the methyl group. This methyl group is less lipophilic than adding more methyl groups, which is less, meth less lipophilic than bromine, which is... 
wrote that wrong. So sorry, so sorry. This should be iodine. So bromine is the greatest compared to iodine. So the homologs are less like less potent than iodine, which is less potent than bromine. So bromine is the most potent, the four position, followed by iodine, followed by the homologs, followed by the methyl, followed by O-methyl, followed by hydrogen. And now here's a comparison of SAR for your stimulants and the hallucinogens. Another reason I love MedChem because just changing one little thing on a single scaffold can, cha can change it from a stimulant to a hallucinogen to maybe even an antibiotic. Um, so let's see, just to summarize, your N-monomethyl is more potent than your primary mean for stimulants. However, for hallucinogens, your primary mean is more potent than your N-monomethyl. For stimulants, S is more potent than R. For hallucinogens, R is more potent than S. Um, for stimulants, you should have it unsubstituted. However, for hallucinogens, the 2,5-O-methyl is optimal. So adding an O-methyl here and over here is optimal. And for substituents, as I spoke about earlier, modulate activity. Um, remember, bromine, more potent than iodine, more potent than homologs, more potent than methyl, more potent than O-methyl, more potent than hydrogen. Okay, review question. Um... So, remember that I told you that the R isomer is da, 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 twice as potent as racemate. So if the potency of this racemate um, is 400, what would the potency of... Wow, what is happening? Um, what was the potency of this R isomer be? 800. Why? Remember that I... Oh, what is happening? Remember, I said the potency of the R isomer for hallucinogens is twice as potent as the racemate. So if I give you the racemate right here, then multiply by 2 if I, give you, if I ask for the R isomer, and you get the potency of the R isomer. Okay, so now let's talk about designer drugs. Um, everyone's favorite topic. Um, so these are also called controlled substance analogs or new psychoactive substances. Many are still legal. Why? Because people make more drugs than can be prohibited by law. If that makes any sense. I was trying to find the right words. Um, so yeah, people are pumping out more drugs than the government can... Um, illegalize. So clandestine chemists use known SAR to circumvent controlled substance laws. For example, if you have cathinone over here, and if I add a, and I tell you that it's a stimulant, um, so cathinone is a stimulant, what if I add a methyl group over here? What does it do? Does it make it a more potent stimulant, less potent stimulant, or more important hallucinogen, or less potent hallucinogen. So if you remember your SAR, remember that adding a methyl group, a mono and monomethylation makes it more stimulant, makes the compound more stimulant. So actually, this is cat, um, like meow meow, um, not woof woof. That's a dog. So this is meow meow. Um, this is actually one of the most potent stimulants identified to date. Um, hmm, okay. Interesting fact. Pump fact. Maybe bring that to trivia night. Um, let's see. Okay, so if I give you this one. This one, okay, on the left is DOB. Um, number right, number letter right. On the right is, uh, unknown structure. So if I give you that, DOB is a hallucinogen. H is... From now on, H is hallucinogen as abbreviation. If I give you that, this is an um, a hallucinogen. It is an MU of 400, and this is a 5-HT2 agonist. 
what happens if I add, if I remove this um, alpha carbon right here? What does this make this compound? Closer to stimulant. If so, is it more potent or less potent? Simply put, just remember, alpha, this is the alpha carbon analog. So, it's still a hallucinogen, it's just the not alpha carbon analog. What would the MU be? What would the potency be? More potent or less potent hallucinogen? So less potent hallucinogen, um, namely, has 150 MUs. Don't memorize these numbers or these structures. These are just examples of how people come up with designer drugs. Um, yeah, so remember, taking alpha carbons um, increase the potency about by about as twice. So since this lacks, since this lacks the alpha carbon right here, it's about half as potent as, whoa, it is half as potent as its corresponding analog, alpha carbon analog. Uh, mechanism of action, well, remember the hallucinogens act at the 5-HT2A receptor, so it's a 5-HT2A agonist. Another example he gave us was MDA and MDMA. So simply adding, so MDA is, a, the racemate is hallucinogen and a stimulant, the mm, wow. Um, R isomer is a hallucinogen. S plus isomer is the stimulant. Um, MDMA is known as the hug drug or X to C or X or E. Um, it's an empathogen, which means um, it leads people to greater openness and empathy. Um, let's see. Here's a Venn diagram showing how stimulants, hallucinogens, and PMMA or pathogens are related. Uh, may not be black and white, they may overlap in some way. Some drugs may be stimulants and hallucinogens, some drugs may be pathogens and stimulants, depends on the drug. So here are your new designer drugs that Glennon talked about. Alpha ET is a hallucinogen, stimulant, stimulant and an pathogen. Foxymethoxy. Um, is a hallucinogen related to the 5-O-methyl group. Oh, that's funny. Methoxy, because here's your methoxy group. That's a hallucinogen. Uh, foxy, because you get really foxy when you take this. 2-CT7, um, mystic blue, similar to DOBU, it's a hallucinogen. 4-MTA, flatline or flatliners. Does anyone see the movie Flatliners? Is it any good? I don't feel like it was good. Um, it's a similar to PMMA, which is an empathogen. For Bromo Dragonfly, or Fly, it's similar to R minus DOB, and it's a hallucinogen. A uh, concept that Dr. Glenn might want you to know is the concept of rotomers. So, here is the structure of DOB. Now, the methoxy groups can rotate along the double bond. To have different conformations. For example, you can rotate this single, this methoxy bond upwards or this way so that it faces upwards rather than downwards. You can rotate this bottom methoxy group so that instead of facing upwards, it's going to face downwards. Basically, the methoxy groups can rotate along the single bond and it can either be, can either be up or down, up or down. You turn, they're called rotomers. Um, so methoxy groups are flexible, forming rotomers. Now it turns out that the down position here and the up position here are optimal for binding to the 5-HT2A receptor. So what one dude did was he locked them in that conformation by closing that bond, closing the ring. So he closed the ring and locked it in the down position, down position, and the up position, or the up position. Um, this made it, this is the optimal confirmation for binding the 5-TH2A receptor, and now you get a really potent hallucinogen. Pretty cool, huh? Um, let's see. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Finally, synthetic cathinones, also known as your bath salts. The initial bath salt combination was methadrone and MDPV. Um... So mephedrone is a D dopamine releasing agent. MDPV is a dopamine receptor, re dopamine reuptake inhibitor. 
MDEMC doesn't wasn't really stated in the handout or the slides, so I'm not gonna really go into it. However, it is a new um. It's also f MDMC is found alone in bath salts. Okay, to review your central stimulants, um, your your phenylalkylamines are your major class. Um, the, the, your prototype is your amphetamine. Um, metabolism, it undergoes 4-hydroxylation in rodents. However, in humans, it goes undergoes beta-hydroxylation, oxidative deamination by monoamine oxidase, so from the acid and the alcohol, and dehydroxylation, which is the major pathway. Three sub-pathways, it can form hydroxylamine, the oxime, and the ketone, and then benzoic acid. Hydroxylamine can be conjugated and excreted, or you can amphetamine can form the imine, then the ketone, then the benzoic acid. Um, you can go back from P2P, which is the ketone, to amphetamine by simply adding a nitrogen, which is why P2P is regulated. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Oh, remember your major metabolites are the hydroxylamine and benzoic acid. I put them in red for you. SAR. Um, just like anything else, adding anything to alpha carbon makes it more potent. The S isomer is three to five times more potent than the R isomer. Um, Adderall is made up of all these little boogers. Um, let's see. Alpha substituent. Methyl is more potent. The al alpha methyl is more potent than no, no methyl at all. Uh, why? Because methyl is lipophilic. Um, also... It is less susceptible to MAO if you add an alpha methyl group because remember MAO prefers nothing to have anything in the alpha methyl position. Homologation or making a chain bigger um, at the alpha position makes it less potent as a stimulant. So the alpha methyl is optimal. Gem dimethyl, so adding two methyls at the alpha position makes it less of a stimulant. The terminal amine. And monomethyl is more potent than a primary amine, which is more potent than other secondary amines. Because remember, and a monomethyl is technically a secondary amine. So other monomethyls are less potent than primary amines, but are more potent than tertiary amines. Less than the flix delis dexamphetamine is a prodrug. The beta position hydroxy decreases potency because it can't cross the blood brain barrier. Ephedrine is a mixture of. Um, can be either RS or SR. However, pseudoephedrine is RR or SS. Um, adding electron with drawing groups to, takes away stimulant activity. However, adding electron donated groups either produces no action with hydroxyl or produces some action with ether groups. PMA is the most potent of these esters. Ethers, ethers. The mechanism of the action, they enhance the release of dopamine and also serotonin and norepinephrine. Here's your summary of your SAR. Your tropane analogs include cocaine, undergoes metabolism by ester hydrolysis and endomethylation. Hydrolysis at the not benzyl group is pref preferred because there's less steric kindreds. Um, it can access that top ester group faster than the benzyl group. It, mechanism of action, it also it blocks reuptake of dopamine and also serotonin and norepinephrine. How? By stabilizing the open out conformation. Um, modafinil is an atypical dopamine transporter blocker by sta that stabilizes the occluded or the closed out conformation. So while cocaine stabilizes the open out conformation, um, modafinil stabilizes the occluded or the closed out conformation. Both, neither are transported into the neuron. Uh, modafinil also works at hypercretin receptors, namely 1 and 2, namely erection A, erection B, and it activates these receptor, receptors to promote wakefulness and feeding. Uh, it's also turned a eugaroa compound, meaning it's not a typical amphetamine like stimulant. The R minus isomer modafinil binds to dopamine 2 receptors, but not at S plus. Um, not the S plus isomer. You can find these is I these isomers at the sulfoxide group. In contrast to varexant, 
Bell Somra, I think is the brand name. I don't know anymore. It is an Erection A and Erection B antagonist, which is used in the treatment of insomnia. Hallucinogens. Remember, keyword single dose, and they act as 5 HT2A agonists. Mescaline unit is your measure of potency. Um, first class of hallucinogens are your indole alkylamine hallucinogens. Um, subclass are your tryptamines. Um, your prototype is DMT. SAR, remember, uh, your optimal terminal amine configuration is your dimethyl, which is equal potent to your diethyl, which are more potent than your dipropyl. Um, adding a 4 position hydroxy increases the lipophilicity, therefore increasing its potency because of the intramolecular bond. Adding a methyl, adding a, let's see, an O methyl at the 4 position decreases potency. 5 hydroxy makes the compound inactive. 5 O methyl increases potency. Uh, hydroxy or O methyl at the 6 and 7 position make the compound inactive. In the alpha substitu alpha, alpha substituent is twice as potent as its corresponding DMT. S plus isomer is twice as potent as the racemate. Uh, remember, you can't have both an alpha substituent and a dimethyl group. Um, uh, alpha substituents increase potency and increase metabolic stability. Um, alpha homologation at the alpha position decreases potency. Um, here's your summary. Lysergamides include LSD and are really potent. Um, you can find them on blotter acid also known as blotter LSD. beta carbolines are naturally occurring in South America and are not as potent. They need an unsubstituted 3 position, the largest group of hallucinogens known to man. They are gaining increasing popularity in the U.S. and are found in hallucinogenic tea. Um, apparently, peyote is legal for certain U.S. Indian populations. Phenylalkylamine hallucinogens. Uh, PIAs are more important than PEAs. Because remember, methyl groups are more important than car hydrogens. Um, they're also less susceptible to MAO oxidation and may also be stimulants. SAR, primary amine, more potent than secondary amine, more potent than tertiary amine. Remember, n monomethylation is a form of secondary amines and is less potent than primary amines. Uh, alpha methylation is more potent. Homologation uh, decreases potency. Um, your R minus racemate is twice as R minus is more right, uh, twice as potent as your racemate. R minus is three to five times more potent than your S plus isomer. Um, monometh monomethoxy groups are not hallucinogenic. However, dimethoxy groups get more potent. Um, and two to f the two five dimethoxy is more potent than your two four. Um, most get more potent with your trimethoxy, and your most potent is 245. Remember, 245 tri, 245 trimethoxy is just dimethoxy combinations put together. Metabolism of these hallucinogens is just like amphetamine, except um, you add the benzylic hydroxylation, which, mean, which means you're basically removing the methoxy group at the 4 position. Um, in the meantime, you're forming an inactive alcohol and you're an inactive acid. Your prototype here for the PIAs, hallucinogens, is DOM. Um, but remember your order of lipophilicity. It goes B, bromine, then iodine, then bromine is more potent than iodine, which is more potent than your homologs, which is more potent than your methyl, which is more potent than your O-methyl, which is more potent than your hydroxy at the, your hydrogen at the 4 position for these compounds, the PIA hallucinogens. Um, SAR comparison. Designer drugs, many are still legal, but you can use SAR to circumvent see, uh, controlled substance laws. Not that I'm saying you should do it, but that I'm saying it is what's being done right now illegally. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Venn diagram. Um, new designer drugs. Um, more, uh, one important concept is the concept of rotomers. Um, dragon, Broma Dragonfly, or Fly, takes advantage of this by um, locking the rotomers in a specific conformation. 
to optimize binding to the 5-HT2A receptors. Synthetic catenones are known as bath salts. Your two famous combinations are mephedrone and MDPV together. Mephedrone is a dopamine-releasing agent. MDPV is a dopamine receptor reuptake inhibitor. And there's also MDMC. All right, so here's a review part of the video. Um, again, feel free to just go through this right now. Oh, wow, that's a burp. Um, go through this right now, or feel free to review, study the material first, and then come back to this. This will always be here. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'll, to, like the last time, I'll give you five seconds after I say the question to give you time to pause the video or to think, and then I will give you the answer with the explanation. So here we go. Number one. Which represents a major metabolite of amphetamine in humans? It's A. Why? So this is the beta hydroxylation. This is beta hydroxylation. This is hydroxylation at the alpha position, which doesn't exist. Um, this is alpha hydroxylation, which does not exist. Limit does not exist. Again, if you know the movie, tell me what it is. Um, this is... Oh, yeah. Uh, aromatic hydroxylation at the 4 position is in rodents. So remember that question asked in humans, not C. So, A. Number 2. If the potency of R minus amphetamine is 5, I'm just giving you a random number. So if the potency of R minus amphetamine is 5, what would you expect the potency of the this isomer to be? So this one is R minus amphetamine. Here is this isomer. What would you expect it to be? Answer is B. Okay, so let's see. This is the R minus isomer because, number 1... Number two, three, this way. Um, the lowest priority group is not in the dash, so reverse it, so it is the R isomer. So what is this one? One, two, three, this way. Lowest priority is in the back, so it's the S isomer. Amphetamine. Lowest priority being the hydrogen. Um, okay, so I'll remember I said that the S isomer is 3 to 5 times more potent than the R isomer. So if the potency is 5, 5 times 3 to 5 times 5 gives you 15 to 25, which is this one. Because 5 refers to the potency of the R isomer, so 3 to 5 times of 5 gives you 15 to 25. For stimulants, this is for stimulants. Um, which represents number three? Which represents the most least potent hallucinogen? Least potent. The answer is B. Um, so let's go through this. So this is the alpha carbon which you expect to be more important, even though I told you that you should not have a dimethyl and the alpha carbon, but it's still pretty potent. You're looking for the least potent here. Um, for o, o methoxy group at the four position, five position. O methoxy groups at the five position increase potency, so C would not be the answer. Um, five hydroxyl, five hydroxyl, inactivates the compound so it's so you have a choice between inactive at B and A which is less potent I can, I'm asking for the least potent inactive is basically not even potent at all so the answer is B number four if the potency of psilocin is 25 mu's what is the potency of the following related compound X? So here is psilocin, and here is X. The 
the answer is, let's see, huh, I just said it, C, ha ha ha, okay, um, hmm. so I remember that, um, okay, so this is your S, this is your, so the difference between psilocin and X is that X is actually the alpha, um, alpha analog of psilocin. So, everything being the same, you have the hydroxyl group here, the benzyl group, the phenyl group here, the indole group here, the 1, 2, ethyl group here, uh, nitrogen here. The only thing that, that changes is the dimethyl and the alpha. Remember, if for hallucinogens, you cannot have a dimethyl and an alpha group at the same time. So the analog of this dimethyl group is the alpha group, alpha substitution. Here's your alpha substitution. Um, which one is it? Is it R or S? So let's see. Um, this is... 1, 2, 3... Going this way, but the lowest, subs lowest priority is not in the back, so hydrogen is not in the dash, so you have to reverse it, so it's S. So remember, for hallucinogens, your um, alpha, so the alpha is twice as potent as your corresponding DMT. So this is your alpha and you have your DMT. So if the DMT is 25, so if the dimethyl is 25, the alpha would be twice as that, which would be 50. 25 times 2 is 50. Now you know it's the S isomer. Remember the S isomer of your tryptamines is um, twice S is twice as potent as the racemate. So now you have the racemate. Now twice that would give you a hundred. So, hmm. so hundred is the answer. So again, to do this again for um, tryptamine. Yeah, okay, so those are going to restrict the means. Remember, see if it's the alpha or the dimethyl, the dimethyl. If you have the alpha, multiply the dimethyl by 2. If you have, and then once you find that, if it's the S isomer, multiply that result by 2. So alpha first, if you get the alpha, multiply by 2. If they tell you it is um, S isomer, multiply by that by 2, and you get the final answer. Last question, number five, which presents the most potent PAA hallucinogen? Let me blow it up for you. So the answer is do, 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 C. C. Okay, so let's go through this. Um, you know that tertiaries for phenylalkylamines are not potent, so you can cross off A. Now you're stuck between everything being the same, the only thing that changes is this group here, the O-methyl group. Which one's more potent for phenylalkylamines? Um, so, let's see. Uh, you know phen oh. So you do know that bromines at the 4 position increase potency increase potency. Now you're stuck between a monomethoxy and the dimethoxy or trimethoxy analog. Um, let's see. So you know it's a dimethoxy because one methoxy, two methoxy, 
You can also consider it a trimethoxy because if this bromine was actually a methoxy, then it could be a trimethoxy. But it's an analog because you replace one of the methoxies with the bromine. So it's technically a dimethoxy or a trimethoxy analog. Um, so you know that dimethoxies and trimethoxies are more potent than monomethoxies. Um, so the answer is C. So yeah, monomethoxies are not hallucinogenic. Remember, monomethoxies are not hallucinogenic. Whereas dimethoxies and trimethoxy analogs are. So to conclude, since all these numbers with 2 to 3 times or 3 times per potent can be confusing, here's a little table for you. So here's the table. Um, for your PIA stimulants, your stimulants, your SI isomer is more potent than your R isomer by three to five times. But for the hallucinogens, it gets a little confusing. Um, let's see. Um, for the indole hallucinogens, which are your tryptamines, your S plus isomer is more po twice more potent than your isomate by two times. S plus is more potent than your isomate by two times. Um, the alpha substitution is twice as potent as its corresponding DMT. So if he gives you the DMT, then he gives you the alpha carbon, multiply it by 2, then if he gives you the S isomer, multiply that by 2. So for PIA hallucinogens, um, the R isomer is more potent than the S plus isomer. Um, basically the reverse of everything else. The PIA hallucinogens are the reverse of everything else. R is greater than S by 3 to 5 times. Oh, just like their phenylalkylamines are basically 3 to 5 times as much. Um, however, your R minus isomer is more potent than your racemate by twice. So if he gives you the racemate and he gives you the R isomer, multiply the racemate by 2. If he gives you the S isomer, then gives you the R isomer, multiply the S by 3 to 5 times, and you get the R. Um, yep, that's it. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, feel free to let me know, or and or leave it at polev.com slash c-h-r-i-s-t-i-a-n R U I six two nine feedback comments concerns positive or constructive let me know I always take it and have a good last psych exam turn up. <laughs>